Hi folks, Joseph Kursky here with you to talk about creating a field survey map and dashboard with ArcGIS Survey123, ArcGIS Online, and ArcGIS Dashboards. These tools are interconnected parts of the platform. They're approachable, powerful, and doable. Now let's start with a blank survey in Survey123. I'm going to use the drag and drop method using web tools where I can drag and drop Likert scale, multiple choice, true false, etc. Here I'm giving it some metadata. Now there's also a Excel method called the connect method with Survey123 that gives you additional power. But here I'm using the drag and drop web based form method which is quite easily done and again approachable. I'm giving it some metadata. I'm creating a campus litter survey. I'm going to say, ooh, how many pieces of litter were found within, let's say, one square meter of this spot that I'm out in the field collecting data in? So it's a number. I want it to be an integer. You have choices, for example, if you want to say, if a person answers this, then do this. You have that sort of branching capability as well. You also have the capability of making these questions required or not. I'm going to go ahead and add another question here. Again, I'm just dragging and dropping these things into the survey form. I want a map. Maps are important to location-based studies, right, folks? That's the whole reason why we're using GIS. Where is the litter located? Now, it's on a specific university campus, South Dakota State University in this case. Wonderful place with wonderful people and vision for the future. So I'm going to change it to a satellite image base map because I want the user when they fill out the survey to be focused on that area. I don't want to have them panning from the entire world down to their campus. So I want it to be opening up in the survey right on their campus. What does the litter look like? I want to be able to have people submit a photograph to the survey. So I'm going to add that question. And once I create these questions, I can move them around in the drag and drop form. I can do date and time. I'm going to keep this pretty simple though. I'm going to say here, what kind of litter are found here? So let's go ahead and add a few glass bottles, paper, plastic, etc. Go ahead and add that into this form. And I can always modify it later on, of course, one of the things to think about is once you publish the survey and tell people about it, you really don't want to make changes because that's going to make your data analysis more difficult, right folks? So give it some thought, just like when you're going out into the field or just like any sort of worthy endeavor in life, you need to plan ahead and you don't just dive in and do it. Test it out. If it's a rigorous survey, get some beta testers to test out your survey in the field. Here's my inform. Thank you. Your response was submitted. Do I want people to be able to submit another response? Yes, indeed. So I'm going to tick that box. I'm going to go ahead and save this. What else do we need to do? We need to figure out if this is the right survey that we want. So we're going to go ahead and publish this. This creates an editable feature service. It creates it behind the scenes. Notice I also get a QR code and a short link that I can share with people once my survey is done. I'm going to go ahead and save that QR code and I can email it to myself and I can use that email to publicize it to others. Also, who's going to be able to submit to the survey? I, I want it to truly be crowdsourced, so I'm going to say everyone and I'm going to be able to just let the people add points to the survey. I don't want to have them edit the survey. So those are some of the choices that you have to think about when you create one of these surveys. Okay, now I'm e emailing that to myself and I'm gonna look at a couple of the other settings here. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to give short shrift to the designing part of the survey, the colors, the logos. You can do all of that, but I'm not gonna spend time in the video talking about that. Now I'm going to test out the survey. You can see that I've just used the QR code to scan that, and then I'm gonna open that on my phone. It's an iPhone in this case. I'm gonna test out the survey. It's saying, okay, where's the litter located? I'm gonna tick that spot. And I'm going to drag my image from my photo library on my phone, or I could take a photograph at this point of the place I'm at on the campus. So I'm happy with that. I've ticked how many pieces of litter, what types of litter, where is it located, and I'm submitting a photograph. Great. That survey is looking good. So it's important to test these things before you, of course, let other people know about them. Make sure they work. Make sure they're 
giving you the kind of data that you need. Make sure the branching, if you set up any branching, works just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and submit another photograph here. Make sure that works. I've got multiple choices for the types of litter, which is exactly what I wanted. There's my photograph. I'm going to go ahead and upload that as well. This, this photograph was over 10 megabytes, but notice how it nicely compresses it into less than 10 megabytes for my survey. And here's my content inside ArcGIS Online. I, I want to make sure that every single one of these content items, the editable feature service that was created behind the scenes, and that's one of the beauties, the powers of Survey123, it creates this behind the scenes. You really don't have to be a GIS expert to create one of these things, but make sure those are all public. So approve this layer to be shared with the public when editing is enabled. I'm going to go ahead and say yes there and go ahead and tick that box and make sure that it is all public. Make sure that you look at these other settings as well, giving you exactly what you want here in your content in ArcGIS Online, which is where Survey123 puts your editable feature layer or service. Okay, so all of those are public except the very first one, the feature layer. I'm going to go ahead and make that public as well. All right, go ahead and update that. So my survey is public, my layers are public, and that's exactly what I want. I've got a zone with all of the surveys that I've created, past and present. Here's my current survey in the upper left there. It gives you a nice management tool capability, a canvas to be able to edit things. I, I don't have any records, so I can't analyze quite yet. But I'm going to go ahead and make sure that survey link is valid, and that's what I can share with others. Super. Okay. And now I've got some points in there because I've just collected some points in the field, and I can look at those points and make sure they're being collected just fine into my survey. And they are. I can see the data. I can see a map. I can see the uh, a bar chart, some other metrics in there. And let's just check and make sure my points are in the right spot. They are, so that's great. And all my layers are in there and they're all public. Super, as well as my survey form itself. So we've designed a survey, we've shared it, we've created an editable feature layer for the data, housing the data. Now the thing to do is to open a map and save a map with that survey set of results in so I can share the map with people as well. So now there's my map. I'm going to go ahead and style that to say, hmm, what about the number of pieces of litter, the total number of pieces of litter? Yeah, I think I want that, the total number of pieces. So I'm going to get a graduated circle or graduated symbol map. And I don't like those symbols right now, so I'm going to tweak the, the range. The, the large to small range is just a bit much. So, and I also don't like the color, so you've got full capability here. This is what gives you a lot of power. You've got full capability of adjusting the symbology. I don't like those symbols, so I'm going to go ahead and change it to something that gives me an urgency of, hey, we should care about litter, right? What's where, why is it there, and why should we care? That's one of the main reasons why we use geospatial technologies. So I'm going to say, okay, I like that exclamation point in the circle. I'm going to go ahead and change the size range a bit so that it's not quite so large for the high and look at that small one is really hard to see so I think I'm going to make some one final adjustment here style options and bump up the minimum size so that I can actually see it okay 22 to 40 40 okay that sounds good at 22 to 40 I'm liking that a lot so now I've got it in a map I could change the base map if I don't want that base map to be a uh, topo base map. I could change it to open street map or a satellite image. So there's my university litter map. I've got now the survey and the map are both done. We've got a couple other pieces, but hopefully you're seeing that this is a lot of power at our fingertips already. Wow. Okay, not too arduous a task to create these things. Super. What's next? Okay, let's go ahead and share the map with others. We want other people to be able to look at this, including the people filling out the survey. So I'm going to go ahead and save that map and share it with others. That's looking good. And now there's my survey. I'm just checking that one more time. And that's all looking good. The design is looking fine. And now in the options, I can say, hey, do you want to see the results in the map? 
I could do that as well. I'm going to do that right here. Click here to see the results or view the results on a map. And then I'm going to link the map to the here. And I'm going to do that right here. So that's easily done. Great. I'm liking that a lot. Gives the, the user uh, another choice of either creating a new survey, submitting another point, or seeing the results on the map. Instant gratification. Very nice to be able to provide the user with, with those capabilities. Okay, so now I'm republishing the survey since I adjusted the end screen. And now what, what do we have left to do? We have to create an app. Let's create a dashboard. Now you've all seen the JHU COVID dashboard. Very powerful, the most popular dashboard ever created with ArcGIS. Now I'm going to create a dashboard and it's going to get a feed unlike the JHU COVID dashboard which received feeds from WHO and local health authorities. My dashboard gets a feed from my one survey which is my field survey which is the litter survey. And again, as I mentioned earlier, I'm not really happy with the uh, default base map. So I'm going to go ahead and change it to OpenStreetMap. That way I've got a little bit more detail because it's OpenStreetMap as well as a crowdsourced layer all over the world. Okay, there's my survey, there's my map, and let's go ahead and check the dashboard now. There's my dashboard, and remember I've just changed my base map there, so I can go ahead and go into, let's do a little data management. I have the dashboard and the web map in a different folder. I'm going to move it to the same folder as where the South Dakota State University campus litter map is, and that way I've got everything in that folder. It's important in GIS work. GIS is complicated enough. We're trying to understand the whole world and everything in it. It's important to be organized. Know where your data is locally and also on the web. Thus, I'm changing the location so that everything is nicely in my same folder. And I can find it later and I can access it later. Now I'm going to go ahead and add some elements with that plus sign. I'm going to point to my original data service and I'm going to add a indicator. Two points have been collected into my survey thus far. Those are the points that I used as test points. But uh, that will update, of course, as people fill out the survey. Total number of survey points added. Not really liking that phrase so much. Total number of litter points added thus far. Mm, how about total number of little litter points surveyed? Okay, maybe change the color since it has to do with the environment. Make it a green color. Okay, let's say we want to ins inspire people to do something about the litter and make up uh, some sort of campus plan. Is it recycling bins? Is it uh, campus awareness? What, what's the situation? So, okay, I'm liking that. Total number of litter points surveyed. I'm going to go ahead and add another element now to my dashboard. Uh, what about a pie chart? Let's say we want to look at the types of litter perhaps okay and that's looking good I can change the font and the colors and so on I'm not going to do that right now okay I'm liking that I've got a pie chart I've got an element of the indicator and I also what about a serial chart what, what would I what could I do there I'm going to point to my editable feature service once again and I'm going to say ooh the total number of litter pieces by observation. Now I'm going to adjust the axes labels, the x-axis and the y-axis. Do that. I can also change the title as well. But I think I'm going to go to value axis first and say frequency there. That's the y-axis. How many people responded with one litter piece, for example? And the value axis, which is the x-axis, uh, the value axis is the uh, y-axis. The category axis is the x-axis. I'm going to go ahead and change it to number of pieces of litter. And that's looking good. OK, very good. And then I can adjust these things. That's the power of these dashboards and story maps and other web mapping applications. You have full capability of editing these things. And if sure, if you know some code, you can dig in and make these a little bit shinier and a little bit uh, more rigorous. And I've got other videos on dashboards, and so do my colleagues, about how to do that. We're keeping the things pretty simple in this particular demonstration and video. I can change the colors of those if I want to, but 
I'm liking that right now. But with without code, you can just drag and drop and resize these things quite readily and easily. And that's what I'm doing here. The whole idea of dashboards is to convey and communicate. So I want I don't want it to be too complicated. I want it to be pretty straightforward and pretty easily understood. Kind of liking that so far, but mm, maybe I, I want these on the right side because there's something else I have in mind that I want to actually have below the map. Okay, very good. And that's excellent. Looking good so far. Okay, add element. Let's add one more thing here, at least one more thing. Okay, let's add a legend. Legend, so I can under help the user understand what those symbols mean on the map. Okay, that's looking good. How many total pieces of litter are within one square meter of this location? Okay, that's super. That's looking a lot better right now. I'm liking that. Yeah, I could adjust that top right. Okay, I want to add an image, so let's go ahead and do that. So it, again, helps the user understand what we're collecting and what the map is showing. I've got the image actually from a tweet of mine, so I can just go ahead and save that image from my tweet. Okay, and adjust the other items there on the right side. I've got a map, an interactive map. I've got a pie chart. I've got a legend. I've got an indicator, an image, and a bar chart. So I'm, again, thinking about complexity versus the ease of understanding. I'm kind of liking that title right there. So, okay, it's looking good. So I'm making some final adjustments and some final reviews of my dashboard. I like that, so I'm going to go ahead and save that. And once I've saved it, um, I've got to go and make sure it's shared. Now in the dashboards tool, as of this moment, you actually have to go into your content in ArcGIS Online to make sure it's shared. Unlike some other tools like story maps and, and web mapping or web apps, uh, like instant apps and some other things, you have a share button right there. But in, in dashboards, you still have to go to the content zone in ArcGIS Online, and that's one of the reasons why I moved all my content into the same folder. But make sure that's shared as well. So now it's got a globe symbol there, so it is shared with the, with the world. Okay, now I want to go and open the dashboard and make sure that it is truly accessible to the general public. So I'm going to duplicate that tab, and then I'm going to use a little, here's a best practice. I'm going to take off the organization name dot maps dot arcgis dot com, and I'm going to change it to www.arcgis.com. So instead of organization.maps.arcgis.com, just www.arcgis.com. And that's the URL that I'm going to use when I, as you can see, I just modified the end screen. Does the user want to see a map? Does the user want to see a dashboard? Does the user want to add another point to the survey? Give the user some choices. That helps empower the user and also encourages them to fill out your survey and do to, to enter a couple of other points as well. So I'm going to go ahead and save, since I've edited the end screen, I'm going to go ahead and save that and republish it. All right, super. We have created a survey. We have created a, from the survey, behind the scenes, a editable feature layer. And we have created a web map and we've created a dashboard. And that is looking good. Now we could, which is beyond the scope of this particular video, but I have other videos and so do my colleagues about how to wrap all that stuff, stuff being survey, map, dashboard into a story map. That would be the last thing that you could do here. This video is going to just be focused on maps, dashboards, and surveys. So I'm not going to go into the story map, but you could easily insert all these elements into a story map along with some text and maybe a video or two or something like that and uh, along with the interactive web map, of course, and create that story map that tells the whole story of litter on the campus. And then what can we do about it? Remember, what's where, why is it there, and why should we care? Map, dashboard, and survey. They're all there, they're all public, and they're all in my same folder so I can easily manage the content later on. So in this video, we have done some simple but powerful things. We've created a survey that people can actually fill out, in this case about litter. We've created a map from the survey. We've also created, and I'm just checking my survey one more time, and we've created a dashboard that gets real-time data as people fill out the survey. Again, all the, these tools are part of the ArcGIS platform, so they're not some niche tool on the side. They're actually part of the platform, and they're quite powerful, approachable, easy to use, and again, getting people to take action about things that are important in our world. Thanks for being with me.